Hi, Steve here from photomasteryclub.com and in this quick video tutorial I'm going to show you a way of using the curves adjustment layer in a way that I'm guessing many people out there might not know about and the reason I'm guessing that is because I spent a long time uh, using Photoshop before I actually discovered that this was an option. So I'll just go ahead and uh, show you what I'm talking about. So let's add a curves adjustment layer first. So at this point you could go ahead and start adjusting the curve in, a, in any of the channels or just in the RGB channel, but there is this option here to uh, do an auto adjustment. So let me just click that first. The reason I don't use this very often is because um, it usually just sort of blows everything out. And you can see here it's, it's added this auto uh, curve adjustment, which has added a lot of contrast and it's brightened the image quite a lot. And it's actually clipped a few too many of the highlights there in the yellows especially uh, they just look blown out and we can see there before and after that just that's over the top but having said that there are some other options kind of hidden under this auto adjustment button and the way you can access those is uh, if you're on a Mac you can hold option if you're on a PC you can hold alt on the keyboard and then click the auto button and up pops this uh, options menu so now what this gives us is four alternative methods of auto curve adjustment that Photoshop can do. So the default is enhanced brightness and contrast. So that kind of makes sense there that that's exactly what it's done. It's just in the RGB channel and it's added an S curve, which has added contrast and boosted the brightness too much in this case. So let's just run through what these other ones do. Here we've got Enhanced Brightness and Contrast. This first option here at the top, Enhanced Monochromatic Contrast. What that means is it's going to enhance the contrast in the image basically without brightening it. So here we can see, if I click that, that yeah, the image instantly becomes less bright and a lot closer to the original, but we've got a lot of that contrast back uh, into the image. So that's always a good one to try out if you're finding that the default enhanced brightness and contrast is doing a good job in terms of contrast and it's not affecting the color too much, but it's just too bright, then you can just choose this top option here. So also another quick note, if you hover over the, uh, the text here, it, it gives you this little tool tip, which uh, pops up in yellow and says, in this case, clip color channels identically to increase contrast while preserving color, auto contrast. So you can just read the, you know, use the, the little bit at the end in brackets there to get a rough idea of what it is. This one is basically auto contrast. It's not popping up again for some reason. Uh, the next one here, enhance per channel contrast. So what this does, rather than just enhance the contrast um, in a sort of uniform manner, is gonna, go in and enhance each uh, channel separately based on the information in the channel itself. Now, the problem with this, it can introduce the strong color cast, which is done here. Um, but, you know, it's always one worth trying. And if we just look down here, you can see as well, each of the uh, red, green and blue channels has been adjusted um, differently because we can see them separately on the uh, on the display down here. So again, not always the most useful one, but worth trying. Now find dark and light colors. This one here is basically Photoshop's attempt at auto color. So again, it's another one worth trying. If you've got a strong color cast in your image and you wanna just remove it, then you can choose this option here and see if that gives you the result you want. And also at this point, you can try this snap neutral midtones Again, we don't need to go into the, uh, the details of exactly what's going on here, but you can look at the curve uh, just below here to see the difference it's making to the shapes of those uh, lines. But again, this is basically auto color. And then just underneath that, again, we come back to the original. So this is the, the sort of the default, unless you've changed the default in your settings, uh, which you can do by ticking that box here when we click okay. But that's all I wanted to show you today, really. So, you know, just to 
let you know that if you hold Alt or Option on the keyboard and click the Auto button in the Curves Adjustment Properties panel, then you know you get all these other options here, which you can you know it doesn't take very long just to click through each one and see if it gives you a better result than what you are expecting from the default option. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to find out more about how to process your images in Photoshop and you'd like to learn my six stage Photoshop processing workflow, then just click the link below this video and then just enter your name and email address and I'll send it over to you in a PDF format. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.